just got Fenax to murder stuff. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? A lot of people have been asking me for a gear tier list, and so today we are gathered here, and I brought Sir Gavin Masters Raid. Gavin, say what's up, please. What's up, everyone? I needed another pair of eyes to do this gear list because I can't trust myself to do it by myself, so I wanted someone else who is a quote-unquote veteran of Raid, and you were the first person that I could think of who has the experience who probably can give a good snap judgment of all of these gear sets. There's quite a bit, so I wanted to open up this discussion and go back and forth with you, and then with you, decide where we would place each of these gear sets together. If you guys aren't following Gavin, he does a lot of content, both endgame and for beginners. Drop a subscription towards him. Good vibes over there. Thanks, appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and start this off. Uh, in no particular order, right now I'm looking at Toxic. The Toxic set gives the wearer a chance to place a 2.5 percent that's a baby version of poison it's a four piece set gavin can we uh can you give me your thoughts on this initially there are maybe two places in the game that i use the toxic set mm -hmm. my favorite place is demon lord clan boss okay. uh i run the myth heiress comp mm -hmm. so my heiress is actually in a toxic set I got my fastest toxic set on her. And the beauty of that is that Eris counterattacks every time any of her allies gets hit, which mm -hmm. is just going to be every turn. So every turn, she's going to get an extra turn and she's going to stick another poison on the clan boss. You can synergize the 75% to land the poison okay. with the mastery, the sniper. Yeah, 5%. Yeah, the sniper mastery. So that gets it to 80%. So you, you basically, four out of five attacks is going to land one of these. You don't mm -hmm. need accuracy for it. And I really like that. And the other place that I'll use that for is uh, any anybody that's already putting out lots of debuffs, especially if I just want to drench the enemy in debuffs. Mm -hmm. I'll put them on the likes of whatever champion for that particular faction in Faction Wars is applying the debuffs and it's just more debuffs it gets through the waves a little bit faster now in faction wars i have kind of a bias toward putting them in stun oh, or maybe provoke that makes sense above toxic so i'd say toxic is maybe b i was gonna say the same exact thing i'm glad we're on the same page yeah that kind of si situationally for clan boss it, it can be A, maybe even S, if you know your team can fit it exactly. Mm -hmm. But outside of that little niche, I'd say it's B. My biggest reason probably putting it into the B tier is the same exact thing you just said. It's very it's a very niche set. It's good at what it does when you need it. For example, I use Toxic Set on Paragon to go up against the Nether Spider just to you know do more damage per turn. And then if you don't know, uh, not you specific, but anybody watching, if you're doing the Paragon cheese, you want a Deflection Set or a Toxic Set. But the, at the time that I built Paragon, I had a Toxic Set, but, but not Deflection. You said that you don't need to build Accuracy Basically, you don't need accuracy for any of the sets. I don't know if that's written anywhere in Raid, because mm -hmm. I didn't know this for the longest time until it was pointed out to me by one of the content creators. I mm -hmm. think I first learned it from Ash. It's a thing that's good to know. Like if you want to use a stun set or a, um, a toxic set or a provoke, provoke set, set, you don't need accuracy. And that can be really handy because if you're up against, say, and, and sometimes I'm able to abuse this mm -hmm. in Arena, of course. Yeah. The, the thing that counter checks this is is friggin polymorph oh my god but let's, let's put polymorph <laughs> aside for a minute um because you can still hit the likes of mithrala with a provoke so like i often bring uko uko is like one of my favorite in live arena right now because mm -hmm. even if he gets sheeped i don't even care because he, he just he just does a bunch of debuffs and he's done his job and it's like yeah. fine you, you can spend the next turn as a sheep cool it's it's not ideal but it's it's better than nothing you can keep that mithrala provoked without needing a bajillion accuracy. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and we live in a world where um, a, a lot of people have over a thousand accuracy or, or a thousand resistance. That's the kind of world we, we, we live in now in Yeah, in easily, Raid. especially Easy. with that increased resistance. Yeah. We're talking high level uh, arena, guys. So if you're a newer player and struggling to even consider 200 accuracy, we're, we're talking about higher level of uh, arena. But of but, course yeah. this scales, right? Like yes. even if you're, even if you've just started, you might, occasionally encounter somebody in the arena that's got 200 mm -hmm. resist and, and you have like 50 accuracy because that was the best piece you could get um but if you had a provoke set it'll just work 35 percent of the time or no. it's got a base of 30 percent but then you take the fearsome presence mastery to get that extra five percent get it to 35 percent 
But yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking, of course, about uh, provoke. We may yeah, as well. and what provoke does is make it so that whoever has the provoke debuff can only hit the provoker, the one who sent out the provoke, and they can only use their A1. I personally like this quite a bit. I consider it to be A tier. I do go out of my way for it. I do specifically use it for things like um, Faction Wars, Cursed City, as well as Arena. I have one Uko in a Provoke set and I have another in a Stun set, but I still give this an A tier. Being able to CC the enemy so that they can't do what they want to do, especially in something like Live Arena, is just huge. It keeps the ball in your court. Gavin, what are your thoughts? Yes to everything you mentioned, but don't forget about Hydra. Like oh, it's, yeah. It's awesome to have like an AoE champ like Uko. Mm -hmm. or Krisk or any of another like bajillion champs that have an area of effect just just tons and tons of champs that will then have an opportunity to provoke the head of decay otherwise cleanses debuffs at first opportunity so you want to stop him from doing that it's also really good against the magma dragon in the doom tower that is true. Um, he can just really completely obliterate the party with his increased attacks and his um, he's got a big AoE. But basically, if you provoke him, all he can really do is just bite the provoker and the yeah. damage is almost non-existent. It's really awesome, particularly on somebody like Uko or the rare equivalent, I think, is... Um, Sentinel. It's, Sentinel is, is like one of my favorite rares in the game. You can, you can bring him to lock down the Head of Decay in Hydra because if you build him right you can get his uh, a1 to have like a 92 percent chance to provoke he's a barbarian oh he's okay. the guy in the gold armor oh you know what i do remember him i think i built him out early on barbarian. for a while i was also using him against magma dragon because he basically really? just shut off everything just had his a1 so the magma dragon couldn't kill my team i he see just kept provoking him turn after turn all you have to do is build him to 100 percent crit because it is dependent on that. It's when he scores a crit, then he has a chance to do the provoke. Mm. But then it's like, it's a, I think it's a base 85 if you fully book him, but then you can get the fearsome presence. So that gets it to 90%. And yeah. then you can put him in a provoke set. And that gives you an extra 23% chance on top of that. So that gets it to about 92%. I more or less agree that it's A. I would actually put it in S. Really? It's one of my favorite sets. It's completely bonkers. Like just about any time I'm in the arena and I might try to bring Mithrala mm -hmm. to just do the cleansing. And then suddenly she's been provoked by somebody. That's or suddenly true. she's been stunned by somebody. And I'm like, oh God damn it. It just, it goes straight through it. But Polymorph checks it so hard yeah. that I think may maybe it does sit at A just because Plarium has not properly nerfed <laughs> Polymorph yet. No. Plarium's still got to do that. Like the big CCs, like Big Papa and Ash, Ash. were talking about this, I, th I think, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I saw a video of it, and the two of them were like, oh my God, Plarium will be done. Polymorph is now more common because mm -hmm. now people don't give a shit about like the, the stats anymore, right? Like yep. it used to be that it was a big buff to defense, but now you just buff everything. So now Polymorph was already the best thing for Arena. So now it's just on everything. And it, make, it makes me sick. It really <laughs> pisses me off. It's, it's making me hate the game. Yeah, one thing that Ash and uh, Big Pop Drop talked about was, or specifically Big Papa said this, he was like, you know, it, it, it sucks when you build a really good team and you set it up and you're like, this is perfect. I got the synergy. They're all built correctly. I'm ready. I'm excited to bring this into PvP and try it out. And then you get sheeped. Random bullshit. Exactly. Just everywhere. You just get fucked by RNG. You get sheeped and you're sheeped for like six weeks. I think intuitively I, I I noticed this, but when I'm sheeped, my speed drops significantly. It feels like it takes forever to take a turn, but it was confirmed when yeah. Ash told us that our speed when we're in sheep form drops all the way down to 150. That's terrible. Yeah. And especially if you get the RNG on top of that to get two turns of polymorph. It's such a... And then, and then you come back at 50% health. Then you come back at 50% health, exactly. The upside is anytime I sheep an opponent with my team where I'm using uh, Fenax, this is a fun thing for Fenax users out there. Mm -hmm. Fenax can attack a sheep and just completely kill them. Really? Because what he's doing is he's getting a second shot, right? Because he, he hits the sheep form and then he gets a second hit. But because they're already at 50% health when they revert, 
They're just completely killed. They're, they they revert, they're at half health, they have no buffs protecting them, they just die. I probably need to go ahead and build myself Fenax, because he, I um... freaking love Fenax. He's, he's, he's busted, and it, like, Plarium, Fenax, A+, plus, no notes, please do not nerf. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I, um... I love that champion so much. Plarium, if you nerf Fenax, I, I quit. That's it. <laughs> We're he's, done. he's seriously my best snooker at this point. I like, I want to get back into doing more live arena videos. I haven't done one in like a month, other than the one that I did for the best start guide. Yeah. Um. But I, but I, I've been, I've, I've created a new team, and like Fenax mm -hmm. is in almost every team. It's usually Fenax and Rodos are like my two go-to nukers. I especially Rodos for sure. But you make me want to build out Fenax and put him to work. Can we talk about stun set? I friggin' love stun. Between A and S, the yeah. same way provoke is stun is a bit better in the in the respect that with stun you actually slow down the cooldown reduction on your opponents so if they've just used their big move they're mm -hmm. they're like one big move and then you stun them they have to wait one more turn before they can even get that back wait a minute so they're not not only are they missing a turn but they're also missing a turn of cooldown i did not know this it's pretty amazing this is why stun can really screw up uh, a clan boss tune. Let's say you've got Skullcrusher and he gets stunned. Mm -hmm. Skullcrusher has this ability that lets him shake it off. So Skullcrusher yeah. still gets his turn, but it'd still screw up the speed turn the speed tune. I learned this the hard way because it was preventing the cooldown. So it was actually wow. taking one turn longer to get his counterattack back. So it was, it was messing everything up. Five years of playing. I did not know this. I did not know this, guys. Five years of playing. I didn't know stuns in general did that. I thought you were just stunned and couldn't do anything. I had no idea it affected your actual skill cooldown turn count. That's insane. I would put stun straight up into S. Oh, yeah. 100% now that um, I know this. Because it's less likely to proc than provoke. Provoke is almost as useful, but once you get into the Doom Tower, mm -hmm. and and this is it's because of Doom Tower that I want to place it at S. Stun is the only way I can get through those Doom Tower secret rooms with like War Maiden and uh, Elhane, yeah. Galek, and the other starters, and and like the small handful of other champions you could bring, um, like Banshee is awesome in a stun set. Bellower, Rough Stone, and a couple other champions that just have an AoE on their A1. Abyssal, mm -hmm. there's another really good one. Kurzad Deepheart also has uh, somebody I used yeah. in a stun set for I think the 11th secret room on one of the rotations. Yeah, totes. Kurzad Deepheart is is like the next best thing to somebody that gets it all the time because yeah. he's got two AoEs and they're both on a three turn mm -hmm. cooldown. In some cases, it's the only way I can get through stages of Cintranos. And it really messes up opposing teams in the arena. It's super fun to put Skull Crown in a stun set. Like my Skull Crown is in a stun set, even though I'd probably get a little more damage out of putting her in uh, something, something like Savage. Yeah. But I put I put her in a stun because she's got just enough damage to be my campaign farmer. So yeah. She's still like one shotting things in the in the campaign waves. She's pretty powerful in the arena, but it's just in case something's a little too tanky. You now also got that chance to stun them, which is just f you. You don't get to go this turn anyway. I don't care if you're still alive. Let's go ahead and uh, move it on forward to another CC gear set. Let's talk about Frost and then Frost Bite. And what the Frost set does it is it's a four piece set with a 20% chance of placing freeze for one turn on the attacker. So if you have somebody wearing a freeze set and they get attacked by somebody one out of five times or something like that, the person attacking you is going to get frozen. Personally, my thoughts on this are it's very niche. I wouldn't really go out of my way to one, farm a frost set, and then two, I don't think I would go out of my way to really build somebody in a, in a, in a frost set. Like, it could be something fun to do, but it's not something I'd be like, oh my god, get out there and go do this. I would personally put this at C. What do you think, Gavin? Yeah, that, that's a fair point. I was going to say B or C. Mm -hmm. It can be fun to have it proc, but really, the better version is Frostbite. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Um, so let's go ahead and throw that in there. The Frostbite set, you get it from the Forge here, it gives a 15% chance to block freeze debuffs, and then a 10% chance to place freeze on the attacker. Did you want to go ahead and give me your insight on this? I don't actually use Frostbite. Yeah, um, I actually do use Frostbite, and I'm even looking at your your Uko there in the, uh, in the Provoke. Yeah. My Uko is built in Frostbite Provoke. Really? That's how I build it. He's got two pieces of frostbite. I, I absolutely love this stuff. Oh, that's it nasty. It synergizes perfectly with provoke because you, you can put the same 
tier six mastery into both. You get fearsome presence, it increases the chance to freeze, it increases the chance to provoke, it increases the chance to stun, and all the other like crowd control ones, right? Yeah. They get an extra 5%. So this way you're getting an extra 5% to basically every piece that you got equipped on your crowd control champion. I also put a Frostbite set as the subset on my ultimate Death Knight. And because basically anybody hitting the team is hitting the ultimate Death Knight, every time anybody tries to hit the team, we got a 15% chance to freeze them. Instantly. Gavin, you dastardly motherfucker. Oh my God, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nasty and, uh, and of course it also means there's there's a high chance that my ultimate death knight or my um, my uko gets sheeped yeah and so that's something you kind of have to live with my ultimate death knight is built with super duper high resistance and the frostbite set like the other sets you don't need to worry about accuracy mm -hmm. so i actually didn't build them all that accurate my ultimate death knight, I just want him to not lose his buffs. I particularly yeah. like pairing my super slow ultimate death knight with my fairly fast helicath. So he gets okay. the block damage put mm -hmm. up on him. And at that point, I just, I don't want ultimate death knight to lose that. So he's under block damage. Now helicath is counterattacking anybody that hits the ultimate death knight. They might also get frozen. They might also get provoked. There's a lot of nastiness that can happen there. Yeah, that is completely disrespectful to anybody you're going up against. And I have to go and look at my Ukos and rebuild them with a with some frostbite. So that that said, I'd say frostbite, I'd place it in A. Yeah. Because it's was, a two piece set mm -hmm. and it's easy to layer it in to a to a, a properly set up guy. And I think basically it goes hand in hand with provoke. Like it's perfect. Cause if you provoke them, then they attack that champion again they're that mm -hmm. much likelier to get frozen again there's some good synergy between those two sets i feel i honestly feel like like that specific setup that you just described needs a video in it of itself that's 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 insane i can't believe i never i never thought about this or never seen it i've never seen anybody else do this like one of the bigger ccs i mean probably just do a video using this team because i have like one of my main four at mm -hmm. this point the the main four that i like to use in the arena i just i use this team in classic constantly mm -hmm. it seems to win the most often and it's mighty uko in the lead and i've got pythion just for all the survival stuff that i need yeah. then i've got lady mikage to do all nice. the other debuffs and the ally attack and all the nastiness and then i just got fenex to murder stuff <laughs> And that's it. So usually right out of the gate, my Lady Mikage is as fast as I could possibly get mm -hmm. her. So I got her above 300 speed, nice. but she's also in stone skin in, in case I get outsped. So she'll do an ally attack and I'll usually target the uh, Sun Wukong first. Okay. So he's just gone. You just eliminate Sun Wukong, F off. You're not going to keep getting up throughout the fight. That's, Cause, not, that's cause... not the way this is going to go. Fenex. Uh, has block revive on his a1 is it exactly his a1 has block revive i think he is the only champion in the game other than a void legendary that can do that let's get these basic pieces out of the way let's talk about life do you have anything lower than c no there's like, nothing have... i could add here's my my feeling when it comes to like the life set and the uh the defense set the attack set f in the very very early game i'm talking like in your first week maybe in your first week. The bonuses that you can get from having those two pieces might be a little bit better than the bonuses you get from the pieces themselves. Mm -hmm. But by the time you're getting five and six star pieces, those bonuses are are barely existent. Obsolete. You're, you're better off just looking at what are the set bonus, what are the, the bonuses on the actual piece? Mm -hmm. But also you want a set that does something. And these sets just don't do anything. So I'd say basically attack, defense, HP, or life, whatever it's called. Yeah. The very top one. F. I mean, they're just... When, when are you going to use them? Yeah, exactly. Going out of... Uh, I mean, I'm going to throw curing in here just for, for the heck of it, too. Uh, I'm pretty sure... I mean, Cure, we'll curing is a curious one. Like, some people have feelings that on the right champion, curing can be good. Like Vogoth? Yeah, but honestly, I th I think I disagree with those content creators, but I, yeah. I feel like I'm, I may be less of an expert than some of them because I, I really don't use curing all that much, but I get the sense that putting a little bit of curing onto a champion that you could otherwise put in something more reliable, like lifesteal or regen or immortal or stone skin or protection. Like there's better um, options. Or relentless, right? Like mm. they just... If they're doing healing and you give them relentless, that's also more healing, but it's more turns. Like it just, it seems like curing is 
almost useless. Yeah, I'd still Pretty basically much. say F. I put D here. Should I just make it an F? It's it's your list, man. No, nah, let's just put an F now. We're, we're going to forget about that part of the alphabet yeah, for, here. Yeah, for, forget just, about it. It's F. Forget F about it. It's for, F. For, for, you know, forget, forget about, about it. it. Forget it. There forget you about it. Forget Get about it. Get out of here. Forget about it. There are better versions of these pieces. So, for example, Life has Immortal. It gives you yeah. the 15% bonus, but it also gives you 3% of healing. Offense... We have Cruel. These are two sets that you get from the clan boss. Cruel gives you extra 15% attack, just like the offense piece, plus 5% to ignore enemy defense. And so for that, that's another reason why I think uh, life and offense are obsolete. And then defense, I think there's like two versions that are uh, like advanced quote-unquote sets of defense that are better. One that gives extra yeah. resilience, I think, and then uh, one that gives immunity. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we'll touch on that in, in a minute. But yeah, you, there's better options out there than using these pieces. So I wouldn't there, go out of my there's way. There's better options like Resilience. And yeah. Resilience are probably still an F. You build them in the forge so that you can make silver. Resilience gives an extra 10% HP and defense. And that's it. And what Gavin was talking about is when you get a little bit later into the end game or even late game, mid game even, craft all of these and you just sell it for silver. There's no real significant benefit to getting extra 10% HP and defense. Like I guess if you have nothing else and you just have the pieces laying around, then sure. But you could definitely get this from substats on a different piece of gear on a different set that's better. Like this specific resilience piece that I have on Gnarl Horn, I have it completely ascended and whatnot, but that's because the rolls on this are like really good. Touching on Immortal and Cruel, we have Immortal and Cruel right here. What would you what would you put Immortal and Cruel at? I particularly like both of these sets. So Immortal, I'd probably put it in A. Yeah, okay. Maybe even maybe even B, uh, but I'm not sure. I have a tendency to pair it with Regen. Yeah, same on here. basically all of my reviver uh or solo champs. Mm -hmm. They'll almost always have this subset of um of Immortal just because it's nice to have that little bit of a boost to HP. Mm -hmm. Um it's it's still only a small one, but it's it's pretty substantial if they have up high base HP anyway. Yeah. But also that extra 3% regen, it really adds up. Because it, it means instead of getting the 15%, you're getting an 18%. It's just a little bit better, and it can mean the difference between slowly dying and just staying afloat for the whole fight. I was going to say 8 tier just as well. I do pair my immortal sets onto uh, champions that have either bolster, guardian, or regen. Cruel often gets paired, at least me personally, when I have a nuker. I pair it with lethal or I pair it with savage. Do you do the same thing? It kind of depends if I need accuracy or not, but if I mm -hmm. don't, it's it's a hundred percent cruel. Sometimes I'll even uh if I if I'm out of really good savage pieces, mm -hmm. I'll just go with entirely cruel. Because three yeah. different sets of cruel is still like forty five percent extra attack percent. So on an attack based nuker, it's awesome. Yeah. And then that's what, fifteen percent ignore enemy defense together? Yeah. So, so it's probably um, still better to go with the savage cruel so you get the good thirty percent. So are we married to this being an A tier? Because I'm I'm because you mentioned B tier and now I'm thinking about it like maybe Yeah, you know, you know it's what? not they're both somewhere between A and B, but maybe we move them down to B. I agree. Maybe A a is special and uh you know the s is super duper special yeah because we can't have everything uh all, all up in a regen would be considered account changing because it allows you to solo a lot of content stay alive but mo most notably to solo certain content so like i have my theodore in a regen and immortal set i have my god seeker neary in regen and defiance for sand devil where do you use regen and would you consider it to be a tier as well i've seen a number of these tier lists mm -hmm. uh by other um content creators and i don't think i've ever seen anybody put it in s but for me it's an s i absolutely love regen uh, I, like I put it i put it on even the revivers that i bring into the arena i try to find True. a way to keep regen on them because usually a good tanky reviver will survive an initial onslaught and if they just immediately start pumping back their healing every time they get hit and every time they take a turn, they're practically unkillable and it's won me so many fights that uh, I get to the point where I might manage to take out their main nuker and then they've got me on the ropes for a number of turns and mm -hmm. it looks like like my duchess has got a sliver of health and then she takes a turn and she's back up to to 30 percent of her health and then she puts a shield on herself and you yeah. break the shield and then she gets more healing so i'd say on the right champion it's absolutely s 
and I use it a lot. Like I have a two-man Sand Devil team. Mine mm -hmm. is Godseeker, Neri, and Ninja as well. But I have a number of solo champions that use that. Like I use Akoth the Seared, the free epic from Doom Tower. It, yeah. I use him to solo Spider 20. He just roasts through all the spiderlings and the and the main spider. Usually takes about two minutes. So that's if I'm not in a rush to get through Spider, mm -hmm. I'll just leave that farming until my energy's empty. Couldn't do it without the regen. Now that you talked it up a bit, I think I might be more inclined to put it S, especially during 3x regen. I do farm regen, so it is a set that I go out of my way for. So yeah, I, I would rate it pretty highly as well. It's such a useful set, especially like you said, putting it on like a Duchess or a Pytheon or Elva. I've seen a lot of Elvas yeah. in regen. It's annoying. Then it comes in handy if I'm fighting the Lunar Archon bastard and I oh need my extra God. damage. Yeah. So it's nice to have a champion that can survive, but still get those brimstone procs. So we've talked it to death. You know, points been made. <laughs> Everyone in chat is like, we get it, we get it, we get it. We, we get it. You, you guys, you, guys what, you love it so much. Why don't you marry it? <laughs> hey, let's talk about Defiant. Defiant, I have I have actually slept on Defiant for quite some time. It gives you an extra 10% to defense. Again, a better version of defense, but it is late end game. And then minus 15% damage taken from AoE attacks. 15% damage mitigation from an AoE, which a lot of the bosses, if not pretty much all of them do, is pretty huge. So I actually do prefer to use Defiant Set over Immortal in places like the Sand Devil or even going up against the Ice Golem, personally. I consider this to be A tier gear just because it, it's it's so great for survivability and it's a subset piece the reason i don't put it higher is that it's not the easiest thing to farm and it's going to be a while before anybody gets to farm up yeah. defiant i still don't have a lot of good defiant pieces i think i've only got one champion in defiant and i th and i think it's um staltus dragon bane so that he isn't outright killed by uh hard dragon 10 because he's he's like the perfect champ for hard dragon 10 you just have to survive and mm -hmm. any poisons he tries to place on him just end up on the dragon instead yeah. It's kind of niche. It's a subset. I'd place it at B for kind of the same logic as the other two subsets that we placed in B, mm -hmm. the uh, the Immortal and the Cruel, just because it's kind of a niche set that you want to pair with something else. But I could see it being justified in A. That's a good but point. I personally would place it at B. That makes sense if we're following the logic. It's a, a subset. But I mean, we also have uh, Frostbite as a subset pair for other sets as well. I'm going to go ahead and yeah, leave it at A, I have a bias. personally. <laughs> I do have a bias just because I obviously use Defiant and yeah, it that, made my comps work. And that's work. fair. You use yeah. it more, so that makes sense. Yeah. This deflection set right here, plus 20% HP and defense, 25% chance to deflect one debuff onto the attacker, whoever attacks you. I think this is a, uh, it's a niche for me. I think I've only ever used it once on one champion and that's Paragon on my alt account. On, on one of my alt accounts, I gave it away. I had Paragon doing Nether Spider and I had a deflection set. So anytime the spider would place poisons or the poison sensitivity, we oftentimes it would get reflected back onto the spider. But that's the only place I, I've ever used deflection set on. I, I'd probably give it a C tier, to be honest. Yeah, same. I have used it once on my main account, and that was a while back when I was using a like a, a really healy, tanky team to try mm -hmm. to survive against Bommel. I think it was Master Butcher was in a deflection set. Master Butcher is perfect because he can actually reflect all of the damage that he takes in healing to the rest of the party as long as he's taking damage not from a boss. And when those little bomblets that Bommel drops go off, those aren't bosses. They're minions. His passive counts. Oh. So that's why he was on the team. This was like the only place I used Master Butcher. Actually, I... I I've come up with a bunch of uses for Master Butcher. He's another one of my favorite rares. We're going to go ahead and put Deflection over at C tier. And let's go ahead and get this uh, Fury set out of the web. Been eyeing it, been wanting to talk about it, what the Fury set does. Basically, your 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 damage goes up as your health goes down. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it's perfect for something like a Skull Crown or a Laorius in particular. I have Laorius, and I put my Laorius in Savage. You need to make sure you are getting hit for that damage. So as long as you know you're going to be fighting at low health, then it can be really, really good. By definition, it's niche at best. I honestly don't know. That's the, that's the thing. It, it seems like a piece that could probably be completely broken in the exact right circumstances but the ch chance of creating that situation is small. Man-eaters in a Fury set could probably yeah, bang like out that, more damage that would be, than Clan Boss. That would be a great way to fight Clan Boss, yeah. 
then that would yeah. be the one time. So, I mean, that might make it worth at least a B. I don't think it would go all the way up to B. Let's call it a C. C. Yeah, very low C, C though. Fair. The shield set. So the shield set gives you and your entire team an unprotected 30% of the wearer's max HP shield. So the reason I do like shield set is because one, it'll help you survive if you're going into uh, an arena fight, uh, you get nuked, you know, the shield set will often keep you up, especially if it's a really huge shield. It's also a buff that can be used with Seer. So like my Ghostborn is wearing a shield set because he's pairing with Seer who can remove the shield set shield and use it a buff, which by the way, the shield set shield is a different buff than one placed by somebody like Brogdy or whoever else places uh, shields. Like those are two different shields. Uh, those yeah. count as two different shield buffs. So that's pretty cool. It's one of those things where it's like, it's a very niche thing for me as well in, in the very one situation, which is for wave clearing. Before the bolster set a while ago, like Mountain King was somebody uh, I used in a shield set. Like he was just legendary. This is before like uh, yeah. buff stripping was a thing. I remember finding a bunch of them in shield exactly. sets. Exactly. Finding them very annoying to kill yep. in the arena. Exactly. I think shield set has fallen off now a little bit because of bolster. Uh, bolster does place uh, a shield and it also does healing and it's protected uh, the bolster set but the shield is unprotected it can be stripped right. i yeah, think I it's mean, a b tier on the outside though shield is easier to farm than bolster and here's True. The, you can also you can also combine them right so if you have somebody in a shield set and then you have somebody else in a bolster set on your arena team oh they stack and they stack into the protected shield. So I did not know that. It, so it, it could be really ha handy. So like I have, I used to have my Pythion in a bolster set mm -hmm. and I'd frequently pair him with Lydia. I put Lydia in a shield set because uh, of what you said about Seer. Yeah. Basically Lydia and Seer are the perfect pair because mm -hmm. Lydia puts up buffs, places all the debuffs and then Seer immediately just comes in and nukes. Yep. And if Lydia's also got that shield set, it's, it's just that much nukier. Yeah. So I was, and and my Lydia is still in a shield set because of this. She she does double duty. I'll use her in in arena, mm -hmm. but if you pair her with anybody in a bolster set, you get that boosted shield, protected. and it's all protected because of the bolster. Nice. So like having said all that, I'd probably still place it at B, but it yeah. is definitely B. It's like a cut yeah. above the other stuff that you would that you would uh, dismiss. Exactly. Um, yeah, I'm glad to uh, see we, we are of the same mind in that one. Can we go ahead and talk about Bolster? What is your experience yeah. with Bolster? So Bolster, I absolutely love, particularly mm -hmm. on the likes of Pytheon. Yeah. The only reason I took it off was I had just better pieces of regen and I I wanted a, a, a faster and a little more survivable over the long term Pytheon. Yeah. But it was a really trade, it was a really it was a hard trade to make yeah. because I do like those protected shields. It's it's really strong. If you're up against a mighty Uko, which people will bring all the time, yep. it prevents him from placing those block buffs. It prevents anybody else from stripping it. And it's an extra layer of protection against most nukers, except for um, that new asshole that we just pulled for. Um, White King Narcy. Yeah. I think he actually hits harder because of it. So that's that's going to kind of muck things about. Mm -hmm. But Bolster also has that built in healing. Yeah. Like you get a 10% heal. And with all of that stacked together, I'd call that an A. Yes. 100%. I really like the Bolster set. It is a pay to win set. You do get it from the Forge Pass uh, for anybody who doesn't know. If you're a like spender, I think it's worth it. A free to play schlub like me. I've got like one good set. I don't even remember who I put it on now. I Oh, no, I do. I put it on my Krisk. You so. mentioned that Uko can't place debuffs or he can't place block buffs if someone has bolster. Is that just uh, the yeah. shield buff in general or specifically well, with the bolster? It's, cause it, it, it's because of the mechanic of his uh, A2 ability. Mm -hmm. What he's doing is he's, he's taking two attempts to strip mm -hmm. two buffs. And at the end of that, if he's stripped all buffs, like they have to have no buffs on them when he's done attacking them. Oh. So if there's no buffs when he's finished attacking, he places decrease accuracy and block buffs. Okay, that makes sense. Bolst because bolster can't be removed, he can't yeah. do it. So that Perfect. basically just just stops that short. 
cool. Yeah, no, I can definitely see why this... You said A tier, right? Because I'm, I'm thinking A tier as well. I'm thinking A, yeah. Honestly, an argument could sort of be made for S tier, no? The well, heals? I mean, the, the fact that we now have White King Narcis and some other champions... Like, you also have to bear in mind, there are nukers that can be built with that mastery mm -hmm. um, that, that does 25% more damage against shields. Shieldbreaker. Which is only as long as... Yeah, it's called Shieldbreaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one that... Yeah, the one that breaks the shield. What's that called? <laughs> but if you have somebody like Helicath, for example, his constant attacks with his A1, and yeah. they all ignore shields, but they don't ignore the fact that the shield is up. So you can give him Shieldbreaker and have him do 25% more damage to the target, making him just a vicious bastard who's completely ignoring shields. Um, and there are a lot of nukers in the arena that just ignore shields so That's if they're true. built with if they're built with that the shield can be a liability i'd leave it at a i don't okay. think it's quite an s so because of the relative rarity That's it's true. also harder to build the best stats possible with it because it's pay to win i agree that's a good insight um let's go ahead and in, in one go talk about the divine sets so for those of you who don't know or aren't aware where these sets are coming from in classic arena at reset every week you get a chest depending which tier i mean from all the tiers you get but if you guys see right here you can get divine offense divine crit rate divine life and then divine speed which are all kind of a little bit better than their original versions you just get a shield. It's a small shield, like a, what is it, 15% shield? It's not huge, and it's yeah, not protected. It's like, and it's just to self rather than for the whole party. Exactly. For example, this one, divine offense, plus 15 attacks so of the original whatever, and then an extra 15% HP shield on self for three turns. I'm a little bit more lenient with keeping divine speed gear just because it's a speed set but for the other yeah. other pieces they're pretty much almost always going to be trash for me basically they're all f with the exception yeah. of divine speed mm -hmm. which is s yeah no 100 percent. and then divine offense would go here to and then divine i think this is divine life yeah that looks right i think that's right yeah so these divine uh, pieces go here and then i would agree that speed and divine speed definitely s tier it's just when are you ever going to build a unit with an extra 15 percent shield in yeah. lieu of something else that you could have exactly might as well throw a speed up here next to divine speed but uh what, what are your thought processes when when putting uh s or s tier speed speed for s tier and divide speed so, so basically anytime i look at a speed set i look and see if it has the speed substat mm -hmm. if it's anything other than boots and if it's boots i obviously look at the main stat and i want i want as many six star speed boots as possible yeah um the fastest unit on my account is 378 and that is my arbiter and okay. she doesn't even have a complete set of, of speed stuff because it turned out I just got better rolls on things like perception. Mm -hmm. um, but she's got one divine speed pair and she's got one speed pair. I, I got lucky and I got one six star divine speed boots Ooh, nice. that also got the awakening. <clears throat> They've got 57 speed on them. And I also have speed boots that have that. So I can just sort of swap them with with whatever whoever ends up being my fastest champion i can make mm -hmm. sure that if it's speed or if it's divine speed whether it's an odd or an even number of the other best pieces i can then even it out with whichever set of boots i want so that's why it's it's kind of handy to look out for those divine speed boots just so that when you have your other fastest pieces you know you have the right boots to yeah. create a pair rather than breaking a pair basically you want the fastest speed substat if they don't have a speed substat they're instantly thrown in the garbage mm -hmm. and at this point if i roll it up to say eight and i still don't get any speed rolls i also chuck it in the garbage yeah it's just not going to be fast enough i mean you keep the speed pieces because you want speed and in this game speed is king yeah and queen and god <laughs> it's, it's, it's god and king and queen all rolled up into one like you need you need speed to touch on that a little more like speed enables you to dominate arena because in most instances if your team or if your characters go faster than they do you pretty much win the fight uh, case in point my yumiko outspeeds a lot of arbiters that i go up against like sometimes i won't even bring in arbiter and i'll just bring in my yumiko with like duchess in the lead and oftentimes my Yumiko, who is going pretty pretty fast, I can't remember the exact speed, but I do outspeed a lot of um, Arbiters. And I keep thinking to myself, like, you know, if they had better speed gear on and they were built proper, if they were faster, they probably would have won the fight. 
in yeah. arena I, I know can... your yumeko is well over 300 speed yeah it's over 300 uh, i don't remember exactly what it is but um high speeds also enable you to do things like unkillable clan boss especially early on where you're struggling to get those speeds imagine if you had um extra speed sets that's why yeah. during 3x speed events for dragon it's important that you're dropping a lot of energy into speed it enables other comps like uh, the 271 emic comp that i use for a lot of my ascension dungeons the speed set just in general is just huge for account growth we think it's s tier gear perception is probably also s because of the the sheer stats that they give you often you probably only need the subset if you got really good pieces for something else so you might want like a stone skin with like a little bit of perception cooked into it you might have two perception pieces and then like two stone skin pieces and then mm. two stone skin accessories and that way you're getting a lot out of it but often it can really pay to get that extra accuracy like you really need it and it's a big boost accuracy compared to the other stat boosts you get 40 accuracy is massive for two yes. pieces so i would consider perception to be s okay I, I was going to say A, personally. I, I don't think... Like, uh, I do use Perception Gear quite often. It is generally useful. But uh, because of the sheer amount of Perception Gear that I end up with, I don't ever really stop to think, oh, I need to go uh, get Percept. But I mean, that's just kind of the way the game is. But um, I don't know. I, I would say, like, it's a high A for me. I don't think I would put it yeah, towards that, S. That's fair. I mean that's but you're 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 mentioning another really important point which is mm -hmm. it, it is ubiquitous so the oh. chances the chances of you getting like a quadra or even a quintuple i mean mm -hmm. a quintuple speed roll would be pretty rare <laughs> yeah but uh the quad roll you might see one on a perception i haven't it's never happened in in my three years playing um I could probably count on one hand the number of quad speed pieces I have on the account, full stop, mm -hmm. like regardless of set. I, like, I think I have one from Relentless, and then I think I have maybe one from, I don't know, something else that isn't even a particularly useful set. But I have a bunch of triple rolls on Perceptions. And no, that's, that's why true. My, my Arbiter, who's my fastest unit on my account, I use Perception because mm -hmm. it was the next best thing, and it had these really big boosts, and it just turned out it was better to have two perception pieces than a third speed set because it was even faster and it made Arbiter's um, other moves more accurate, which turned out to be useful because I actually wanted to have at least 200 accuracy for other areas of the game, not just yeah. Arena, because I also use her in Faction Wars. I also use her in Sintranos. There are other places she'll get used. I think I also use her in my Bommel comp. My opinions are always ma malleable. I'm always open to hearing it. And yeah, you know, uh, that, that you bring up probably the best point is that it's so generally accessible to pretty much every player out there and now that i think about it even on my free-to-play beginner account that i uh, recently started somewhat i did roll some good perception pieces and they have been account changing it's uh, definitely an s tier piece of gear but what are your thoughts on instinct gear it gives you 12 percent to speed just like the regular speed set but it also gives you an ignore 20 percent of enemy defense i personally love this set uh, it's not the easiest to get but if you do get instinct gear, do you, do you remember where you would get instinct gear from? I think you get it from the Forge Pass. Okay. I think so. Um, and it is a four-piece set, right? Yes. If I'm not mistaken. It's a little less efficient on speed than a speed set, mm, say. That's uh, a good but point. yeah, you do. And it's a little less efficient on uh, damage reduction than, say, Savage or a lethal set. True. So I'd say it's, it's like, it's a little bit worse than those, but it's got it's got a bit of both i guess the question is are you ever going to need a nuker to have that little bit of extra speed on it or would you rather have a little bit of extra damage reduction on it and then get the speed out of the stats and that's the thing it's it's a hard to come by set it's kind of hard to figure out exactly how to build a champion around it to be better than something built in say lethal yeah it's not a terrible set either so i'd probably say b we talked about it being a four piece set so efficiency as well as a little bit less than savage and lethal when are we going to need nukers for speed uh, to touch on that I, I personally do like my nukers to be decently fast i usually try to go for 220 speed on my nukers 
And the reason is because uh, with the exception of Sun Wukong, if my nukers are slow, they don't take a turn, they don't do damage. So it doesn't matter how hard they hit, if they don't take a turn, well, they don't take a turn. I'll give it the B. It's not the easiest thing to get. It's paywalled and it doesn't provide that much extra. The Righteous set was introduced during the Call of the Arbiter series and it's a two yeah. piece set plus, tw uh, plus 10 to speed and extra 40 res. I don't know if I actually use set pieces of Righteous. I kind of like it in theory, but the thing, thing about Righteous is often the champions that need to have really high resistance, mm -hmm. I don't bother with speed on them. Like my ultimate death knight, for example, I keep him at 97 speed. Like I don't, I don't want his speed increasing. I want him to just sort of sit there with that that stone skin on for as long as possible, exactly. and then the block damage as long as possible. If I put pair him with Emic, the unkillable, as long as possible, mm -hmm. and so on. You want him to just sort of outlast whatever the opponents are throwing at him. This is the thing. It, there, there, there are units that absolutely could be really good on. It yeah. could be good on a Mithrala. I'm thinking Duchess. Although Mithrala also has that passive where you also want accuracy, so yeah. Mithrala would actually be better in perception. But if you had like a really, really good piece, you might give it to Mithrala. You mm -hmm. could put it on like a Siffy or a Duchess or a Pythion, Elva, or whoever else mm -hmm. you, you want to not get knocked about too much, but you also want to be fast. So I'd place it at B. Pretty much said it when you were like, in theory, it's good, but in practice, the impulse gear, you get it from Live Arena. It gives um, extra 12 speed and a 30% chance to reduce random skill cooldown by one turn. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I obviously don't have too many of these and I don't really yeah, use it. Yeah, I don't obviously. have too many of those either. <laughs> if it's not um, obvious by now. They, Yeah, they do sound like they'd be good pieces, but yeah, I have no idea. So I don't know, B or A, take your pick. It's a four piece. Accessibility is a little bit low because of live arena. Yeah, I'd say A. I do like the extra speed. Built-in reflex within this set is pretty huge. That's fair. So supersonic, set bonus, one piece, plus 20 res, two pieces, plus 15% HP. Then you got plus 10% speed for three pieces. Four pieces, you got fills the turn meter by 2% for each buff on each enemy. Five pieces, you got plus 10% speed. Six pieces, you got decreased turn meter effects placed by enemies on this champion are 30% less effective. Seven pieces, you got plus 20 res. Eight pieces, you got plus 12 speed. And nine pieces, you got increases any fill turn meter effects on this champion by 30%. So basically, supersonic is like turbocharging a unit. If you could get like all nine pieces on somebody, it would probably be even better than speed. Really, really fast. Whereas with three speed sets, you'd have up to 36 six percent mm -hmm. so that's a little bit more but bear in mind you could still put on three supersonic accessories and still get an extra 10 percent speed which means if you used all speed and got that 36 and then put on three supersonic accessories you'd have 46 percent bonus to speed now the only issue is getting that because supersonic drops from Centronos. yeah so it's it's never gonna happen for me it's, <laughs> or, it's gonna be a, or possibly yeah. anyone it's not gonna happen for me either it'd be nice if if in the if in the little search thing you mm -hmm. can actually isolate for particularly on accessories you could actually isolate specific bonus types and and another thing would be a, to just search my account to see if i have all three pieces for any faction streamline everything yeah percent. maybe this is something for if plarium doesn't want to bother which of <laughs> course they don't maybe they hell hades people with their optimizer yeah. not that i've ever used their optimizer before but really? Really? This might be an idea for their optimizer. And this is the thing, I don't use it. I don't know if they've already done this and I'm like reinventing the wheel here. I actually do have to say they have an option to filter out specifically if you want a blood shield ring or a reaction amulet. Well, per well perfect. So obviously yeah. I need to use that. <laughs> no, no, it's good. If you don't use it, you can you, there's no way you would have known if you don't use it. Yeah. So supersonic goes to Yes. Well, I mean, let's let's pedal back because what's the likelihood of us getting a six or, a well, six or well, like a nine piece? The, the nine piece, the nine piece would definitely be S. But honestly, even with like you have the turn meter fill starting at four pieces. So mm -hmm. even if you just had four pieces, you've still got a little bit of resistance, a little bit of HP added. You have the 10 percent speed and now you're getting the turn meter fill for each buff on an enemy. So if you have a team that like goes faster than you and they start putting up buffs, mm -hmm. your speed lead, if they're in this, is going to start to go faster, right? So it gives you an opportunity to catch up. That's just with four pieces, so you don't even need those goddamned accessories. 
you get to six, you get decreased turn meter effects placed by enemies on this champion. That's another thing. If you encounter that with Lysandra, Valkyrie, or champions that just sort of passively like oppress mm -hmm. your champion's turn meter, it's less effective. So it's another countermeasure. I suppose high resistance is also something that can help against that. Instead of supersonic, you could just try to bring a high res, high speed thing, and then that might be another point for um, Righteous, which we already placed at B. If you could get all the way to nine pieces, supersonic would absolutely be S. But I mean, even if you only get to four pieces, I think it's still an S. I do get that it's, it's like, I, I haven't built anybody in supersonic. Neither have I. I, just, I keep getting complete garbage pieces. Exactly. But if you get pieces that aren't total garbage, I think it's S, even if you got four pieces of it. I guess I'm a little ambivalent putting an S just because I don't have experience with it. But uh, as you walk you know me what? through that's, it, that's that's fair. I mean, uh, like honestly, this is all theory crafting. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I was I'm gonna honestly, say yeah. A tier personally, but yeah. I'm I'm willing to go S tier because you know the way you explained it sounds good too. I'm fine with with either. We could even rock paper scissors for it. We'll do the beanie rock paper scissors rock, rock paper, paper scissors, scissors, scissors shoot. Go. I did scissors. One more time. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Scissors, go. I pick scissors I pick again. Scissors again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, right. okay. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. Go. I did scissors again, bro. Why okay. are <laughs> you keep All right, all right. Let's go again. No one is allowed to take scissors this time. Okay, no, no, no one picks scissors. Got it. Ready? See, if you pick scissors, you're a cheater, which means we're both going to go with paper. <laughs> I was just about to pick paper. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the problem with that. Well, so was I. Okay. <laughs> I figured okay. I'd be honest about it. All right, okay. You know what? Just put it in A. We'll put it in, we'll A. Put it in okay. A. We'll call it, we'll call it a draw. <laughs> you, you've, just, you've changed my mind. Merciless, since we're already talking about the nine pieces set. Uh, piece we're sets. already on it. It's already open. I can look at Merciless. Yes. Uh, so we got Merciless. Set bonus. One piece. 10% attack. Two. 15% crit damage. Three. 5% speed. And four. 30% chance to decrease to random skill cooldown when dealing damage. So even just with those first four pieces, mm -hmm. I'd say that's an S. I mean, you're already getting like a lot of extra damage out of it. Like 10% attack, 15% crit damage. You're getting extra speed. And like getting getting that cooldown reduction thing. I mean, yeah. on somebody like Rodos, for example. Oh, yeah. He's, he's got like his A2 on a two-turn cooldown. If he's in this Merciless set, he's basically just going to be ripping health off everybody constantly. I'd say it looks like S, and that's just the first four. Then you got five pieces, 15% attack, six pieces, 35% ignore defense. That's like the biggest, right? That's what she said. That's like the biggest so far. Seven pieces, 5% speed, eight pieces, another 15% crit damage, nine pieces, 15% chance of getting an extra turn. Built in relentless so if on you could top get lane. nine pieces on this, it'd be another one of those S plus kind of deals. Best damage set in the entire game. In a nine piece set, maybe 50 years from now. Yeah, 50 years. A casual That's 50 probably, years. I, I could probably get nine pieces for the for the undead faction by there you then. Go. If you've ever been in arena, you know it's it's S. There's counters to it. Like you can counter it with bombs. Timid the fool. Um, outside of the obvious counters to it, though, I gotta say stone skin is an obvious S. If you think of a more tomb cop there is nothing else to put him in you just put him in two turns of stone skin impossible to break i hate everybody that has this champion i want him for myself but i don't have him gives you plus 80 this is in total plus 80 to res plus 16 to hp 30 percent to defense two turn to the stone skin buff which basically makes it so that if you hit it then like nothing basically nothing happens it's like hitting a, a wall and doing basically yeah. nothing. It's like trying to punch through the Earth's surface. The best thing about the stone skin is that it has accessories. So if you get any accessories at all, suddenly you can you can do double duty. You can give somebody four pieces of stone skin, so you have just enough for that one mm -hmm. turn of stone skin, but you could still put them in a provoke set, or you could still put them in a regen set. That's what I've yep. done with my Duchess. The next nine piece set we have to talk about is the most recently introduced Rathalos set. One piece? 5% crit rate, two pieces, 15% crit damage, three pieces, 5% speed, four pieces, fills this turn, this champion's turn meter by 5% per each enemy hit by AOE attacks, five pieces, 10% crit rate, six pieces, ignores 30% of enemy defense when using AOE skills, seven pieces, another 15% crit damage, eight pieces, another 5% speed, and nine pieces, 30% chance to repeat damage dealt by AOE skills. So if you get all nine pieces, it would be completely bonkers. But even if you get that four piece bonus with the Phil's champion's turn meter by 5% 
per enemy hit by AOE attacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine like an AOE champion in uh, the spider. You'd be filling your, your turn meter like crazy, but you would instantly get another turn with a lot of champions that already have that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. on anybody that has a lot of area of effect attacks, not necessarily just nukers. Like it sounds like this is a nuker thing for like a skull crown or mm -hmm. something like that. Either one way or the other. It could be used for, like you said, Uko, so that they can fill up their turn meter faster. Or it also looks like it could be built for somebody who's a damage dealer so that they could pump out more damage on top of going a little bit faster as well. I'd put this in S because even if you take just one piece on like an accessory, mm -hmm. you're getting 5% bonus to crit rate. And there's yeah. really nothing else that does that. I think it's an easy S. For the longest time before these nine variable piece sets were introduced, we were kind of just throwing in random one-off pieces that are like really good but they don't really add as a set so there was there was something missing but now with these one pieces of gear we're able to get that much more out of gear so oh, yeah i give it an s tier as well oh man protection s but let me tell you why it also brings a crap ton of bonus stats right you get mm -hmm. you get hp percent you get speed you get resistance it's almost as fast as speed sets but having protected buffs just completely like ruins a debuffer's day. Like I have a bomb team that needs the whole team to die immediately. Like I, I basically, it's a blitz bomb team. Mm -hmm. I've stopped using it as much because basically it gets walled out by protection. As soon as there's a protected block debuffs, I'm done. I'm not gonna be able to get the job done. It's a little too OP, but I'd say it's an easy S. I should probably take a look at a protection gear again because I don't I, use it. My that, yeah. Emic is, is built out in protection. I also did the 271 speed Emic, but oh, with wow. protection. Protected buffs is a huge thing. <laughs> hey, let's talk about lethal. For me, lethal is S tier off the bat. Extra 10% yes. crit rate, so you don't have to worry about another 10%. You could focus those extra stats into like extra attack or crit damage. On top of that, you're getting what you get from Savage, which is ignoring 25% of the enemy's defense. Gavin, what are yep, your thoughts? 100%. Just, just totally agree. S tier. Please do not nerf. Like, for all the yeah. same reasons as, uh, as the um, the Rathalos set, right? Like, mm -hmm. you could take one piece of Rathalos to get 5%, um, giving you an extra 15% to your, your crit rate. And it's so hard to build for that at any stage of the game. You always need to make sure you got, like, at least 15% crit rate on each piece just to total mm -hmm. 100. It's a lot. And, the, and it just makes your life so much easier if you don't have to worry about that extra percent. Yeah, and that way you can smack that much harder. You know, on that same tangent, I would probably say Savage is one of my most sought after pieces just as well. I'd, I'd put it up there with, with S tier as well. It seems odd to put it next to Lethal because Lethal is better. For a lot of people, Lethal's probably considerably more rare. Yeah. I might be one of the few people that it's not rare for because I just... I exclusively farm Dark Fae. Um, Dark Fae when it, whenever she comes up in the rotation. Yep. I even hold off on doing any secret rooms mm -hmm. whenever I start the Doom Tower until I reach the top. I Same. always do hard Doom Tower first, go straight to the top, and as soon as I've reached level 12, then I'll do all the secret rooms just so I have all those extra silver keys just to farm the top level of Dark Fae. Just about every major nuker that I use is in lethal. That's why I'm like, with Savage, you don't get that extra 10%. It makes it a little bit harder to build. But if you can build to that 10%, it's just as good. It's just a little bit harder to build for it. That's all. Yeah. But it probably does still belong in S, honestly. Uh I think it just like a notch below lethal, but I, I still personally think it's it's a S tier as well. Like anytime there's a three X, I I dump tens of thousands of energy if I if I have it um, into wow. into fire knight. Like I I just love savage. I don't know what it is. I just like seeing big numbers whenever I'm going up against against somebody. Yeah, well, you want those big numbers. You, you want you want you want those opponents to be dead before they hit the ground. <laughs> let's let's go get ahead. Let's go get this uh, hex this cursed set out of the way. Now, yeah. Cursed Gear used to be absolute, pretty much trash. Absolute trash. Because it only provided, like, what, a 75% a, a chance to place heal reduction, which doesn't really give that much use anywhere. And, yeah, and now... It was the 50% heal reduction, too. 50% so heal it, reduction. It, it wasn't even the good one. Yeah. And now it places Hex, which just totally turbocharges damage. Yep. 
So it's, I'd say it's situational. You probably want it somewhere in your Hydra team. Outside of that, like maybe if you're if you're min-maxing doing damage to waves, but even then, I don't know, because you're probably using Seer, and then you just want to crank up as much damage and add as many mm -hmm. buffs as possible. So I'd say basically inside Hydra, it's A. Outside of Hydra, I don't think you'd use it. I might call it B. It would be niche at best, I think. But it is good for Hydra. Yeah. 100%. Let's talk about Killstroke. 20% extra crit damage and then 5% speed. I do know you get it from the clan shop. It's probably A or B. Like, I, I do think it's it's an A tier piece of gear because you're doing more damage and you're getting more speed. So it's like a little bit pumped up version of crit damage. The only issue I have with it is that you have to get it from the clan shop. You are limited by how many you can get from the clan shop and it doesn't pop up every single rotation. You have to wait until it pops up. So it's a little bit harder to get. I kind of want to put this on B if I'm being completely honest but i don't I'm ever fine. really fortitude is this one right here yeah fortitude is the one that drops from bottom res and extra defense so you get 40 points of extra res it's a two-piece set and you get plus 10 to defense so it's immunity no i mean it's not immunity it's a it's a resistance set but a little bit better because you get the extra 10 percent of defense uh you know i don't really use this set uh if i'm being completely I actually, honest i actually do you I do i think basically of all the resistance boosting sets mm -hmm. i think this is the best one Okay. I actually use this one on my, um, I think he's on my Helicath, just to, just to help get him enough resistance so that mm -hmm. he doesn't lose his uh, block damage so often. So I think his subset is Fortitude, because also that, that defense plus 10% had a nice little bit of synergy as well, so you get a little bit of defense. Yeah. You get a fair amount of resist. I'd say it's the best of the bunch when it comes to increasing resistance. It It's maybe a cut above wherever we're going to put all of the other resistance boosting ones. Mm -hmm. I might put all the other resistance boosting ones in B. Yeah. And I'd probably put this one specifically in A, just because it's a cut above the rest. I like that. I'm good with that, with that plan. Uh, Untouchable is the other uh, resistance boosting set. You, that you get from doing Scarab, you get immunity for two turns and then plus 40 to res. It's a four piece. I don't personally use it. Um, and then, of course, there's the regular immunity set. But I, I agree. Yeah. I think I think B for the other ones. Let's go ahead and throw Fortitude up at A. Immunity goes to B. And we're also going to put Untouchable in B just as well. We might as well also put Resistance. So I forgot Resistance. Yeah. I wanted to go ahead and talk about these counterattack sets the avenging as well as the ret set i don't use them i don't think they're particularly useful i find them to be extremely useful in the right circumstances okay back when they they gave everybody deliana because she had an aoe on her a1 and because it had a leech on her a1 it basically just made her immortal i'd put her in six pieces of retaliation we were lovingly referring it to it as retaliana with as much retaliation on on deliana as possible she just mows through waves uh, i was using it to campaign farm nightmare it just just blew straight straight through nightmare with her by herself it was easy that's niche at this point like i don't know a lot of people use Deliana and the newer players aren't getting her for free. Fenax is another champion where I absolutely want his A1 to kick in as often as possible. Fenax frequently he'll just he'll just interrupt the enemy turn, come in and completely kill someone. Any decent AoE nuker would be good in this. Mighty Uko would be good in this because like he gets hit and then he could immediately counterattack with the other effects you've got in him. So let's say you put him in a provoke set, you give him a retaliation set. Anytime he gets hit, he hits back with a decrease attack because that's like his a1 ability and he's also hitting back with a potential provoke the red set is a two-piece with a 15 percent chance i would actually place it at a but i would understand it at b as well i think it's like between a and b oh and what about but avenging got, what do you think avenging on the other hand i'd say is b i have okay. i have more difficulty using it now because of the way they changed it i liked it better before now like it used to be a 45% chance to counterattack damage as long as it's a crit, which happens all the time in Arena. But now you're doing the counterattack on debuffs. I have Lysandra, and I think she's the only champion on my entire account that I put in it, because Lysandra's A1 takes debuffs that are on her and immediately places them back on an enemy. And my boy Pinthroy is also like <laughs> he, he hits back with his A1, and he's just transferring debuffs back to the uh, attacker yeah outside of that it just it seems like kind of a strange idea knowing that the red set is actually a two-piece i thought this i thought it was four pieces this whole time i'd give red a b 
uh, because there are situations like you said where uh, you know Deliano Uko could counterattack and you want that to pop off Fenex and I would definitely give Avenging a C as well just because you have to rely on getting debuffed for it to happen. Let's talk about Frenzy. They recently changed this as well, right? Frenzy used yeah. to, every time you were hit or lost a certain amount of HP, you got a boost turn meter. I don't even know what to do with this set. I want to give it an F. I hate I yeah. hate what Plarian did to it. I think it I think it's awful. Plus 5% turn meter for each debuff received. Yeah. You don't want to receive debuffs. You don't want to. And like, what are you going to do? Somebody stuns you and you go faster and then you just stand there spinning your head around. Like, By 5%. Exactly. I don't know what they were thinking when they when they, when they they nerfed that set. Like, why do you hate this set so much, Plarian? They why? probably didn't want Norog to, to do too what well. What did the Frenzy set ever do to you? Didn't do anything. It was just sitting there being perfectly happy making Norog broken. YST had this really awesome build for soloing Bommel with Connelia. And so that's the thing. I want to give it an F because quite frankly, it's like it's something that was cool. And yeah. Plarium completely ruined it. It's garbage now. What is this piece right here? I keep looking at it. It is Zeal. Crit damage plus 25% plus 7.5% damage for every 25% HP the target has. So basically you do more damage, the more health the enemy has. So I guess... This is the kind of thing where either you want to be nuking somebody out of the gate and hitting as hard as possible while they're at full health, mm -hmm. or maybe you want to be like your clan boss team, but you're hitting clan boss right at reset. Would you want this particular p uh, set on over something like uh, Savage? It's a tough call because it's crit damage plus 25%. And that's that's the flat thing that you gain. That's, that's not the dependent part. Mm -hmm. Um... So, I mean, you can get really explosive damage out of it. I mean, the way it calculates, you, I, I think that, that gets up to, what, 55% crit damage added? That might be better in some situations. Full disclosure, I've never built anybody in this set. Neither have I. I can think of ways this set could be used, but I don't think they're practical. Feels like a B. It, it feels like it could be anywhere between a B and an F, honestly. I have no idea. But yeah, let's put it in B. It sounds let's, like it should yeah. be a good enough set. Let's talk about Guardian. Wearer absorbs 10% of all damage dealt to ally champions and then heals by 10% every turn. I do like this set. It helps to keep my entire team alive. Usually you put Guardian on somebody who's uh, like a reviver support champion. Or even like a, I think Ursula or Ursiga. We were talking about Nogdar earlier, mm -hmm. right? I actually put him in a Guardian set as well. I basically wanted him to take more damage for the party. So I basically just had him take as much damage as possible just so that he would die immediately. So that he could come back and immediately start hitting. Oh, and, yeah. and Wither the Crowned is in Guardian. Those are my champions that I put in Guardian. Probably about as valuable as, as Bolster. Mm -hmm. It might be B, it might be A. I would say A tier. Let's talk about Stalwart. Stalwart reduces the damage that you receive from AoEs by 30%. Do you use Stalwart anywhere? I think it's a really not good really. set, but I don't not, use not it. Not really. Um, Defiant is a little bit better. Yeah. Like if you can get two sets of two Defiant, you get mm -hmm. the extra defense plus the damage reduction, yes. which is just like a little bit better than having nothing but the 30% damage True. reduction. So it's like a slightly inferior version of that. It's a little bit harder to build because of that. And you can't pair it with regen because it's a four piece. Yeah. Maybe it's a C. We'll give it a C. I agree with you. Crit rate gear? I think it's complete trash. I don't like crit rate gear. Yeah, right at the start of the game, it can help help but yep. uh, f crit rate like you said in the beginning is is cool it can help out but you it drops off very quickly i wanted to hit on lifesteal to me and I, i've said this before and you know i stand by it lifesteal is really good early on but you don't want to rely on it it's like training wheels you, you don't want to learn to lean on lifesteal too much but it definitely helps you get to where you're going especially early on i think yeah. lifesteal is c or b I'll, I'll let you choose i was gonna say a or b so i guess we can split the difference and make it b i like lifesteal because of how valuable it is mm -hmm. in the early game it's not the best thing but it can be really really good early game when you you don't necessarily have decent support or anytime you have somebody that needs to solo or anytime you even just need as you said supplemental ways of staying alive yeah so that's why i'd say it's a b for most players just starting out it's going to be the first set that you really put on your best champion and you're yeah. going to be happy with it for a while when i first started playing a while ago i relied way too much on lifesteal and i made that mistake so maybe i'm a little bit uh biased with my experience but yeah on an early account it's a uh, yeah it, i agree it, later on it's probably b to designate there are better things Things. Yes. But man, I like lifesteal. 
I'm a fan of lifesteal. Accuracy. It's a flat 40 points boost to accuracy. Early on, sure, if you're lacking accuracy, Perception Gear will definitely take the throne over accuracy. I'd say B. Yeah, I was going to say B as well. It's still way better than the other stat boosting yes. sets. Yes. You don't get that speed like you do with Perception. Let's talk about Relentless. Relentless is really cool. They nerfed it from 23% to 18%. Gives you oh, an really? extra... Yeah, it used to be 23%. It's been, it's been 18% for as long as I've been playing. So that must have been a It was a while ago. ago. Like it, before. I started playing in 2020. Okay, so yeah, so, right around that time. Yeah, even at 18%, I think it's still an S. Xeno Grey Blade Master. Mm -hmm. And I put her in Relentless, and holy crap, she's just a motor. She just murders things. <laughs> I'm having her like solo her way through Faction Wars. She's, she's just like, wow. she doesn't care, because she just keeps taking turn after turn after turn against the clan boss. She like does almost double what Kale is putting out, and Kale's putting out all those poisons, right? She's just getting even more, because if you get her Brim like even just one star of Brimstone on her with her triple hits, or mm -hmm. any other legendary that you've got who's got a triple hitter on the A1, like, man, the amount of DPS you can get out of somebody with Relentless, it's just relentless. It's nuts. It's bonkers. Uh, against Hydra, same thing. Yeah. I mean, it's getting lots of extra turns against Hydra, you're just cranking up that damage. And I... I catch people in arena using using the yep. same thing like just scoring three turns in a row sometimes and I'm like what in the hell is going on here I went up against a, a, a Rodos in Relentless once and he just kept taking turn after turn like because he has a one that has the built-in extra turn chance yeah. and then Relentless he just kept going and going and going but yeah definitely S tier uh, especially for somebody who's like a supporter champion you build them really fast in Relentless taking as many turns I know on my wife's account I built her Elva in Relentless, and Elva just keeps going nice. over and over again. Maybe it's time to retire her from the clan boss team. She's too good. She's too good. I need to get her in Relentless. I love this idea. I'm going to rebuild it in Relentless. I don't care. Let's talk about Swift Parry. I think Swift Parry, uh, when it first got announced, I thought I was, I was in love with it. When it came out, and I started using it, it's not really my favorite set. Like, I have it on Pytheon just because it, it can be annoying when you're in Arena and you go up against, like, even a Scipio or a Duchess and they place unkillable. And that's the only reason why I have Pytheon in yeah. uh, Swift Parry. But other than that, like, I, I'm thinking about changing him back into Bolster. I wanted to try this out. And, you know, it's nice to get the 18% boost to speed. The crit damage doesn't do anything for him, but it was the 50-50 unkillable for me. What do you think about yeah, Swift Yeah, I'm always amused when I when I see uh, a support champ in, in mm -hmm. Swift Parry. Like, uh... For, for me, it's always Duchess. I see a Duchess in Swiftberry. Yeah. I saw this one Duchess recently. She was in Stone Skin and Swiftberry. So two turns of Stone wow. Skin, then a Swiftberry, and I still won. That's the thing. Like, like, like dude, yeah. you're trolling me in the arena, but I'm still going to get you eventually. It's just super good on those nukers that already have a little bit built in that keep them alive, and it just gives you that that little bit extra. I was going to say S. That yeah. Easy S. Okay. Easy S, just yeah. S. No, no, no question. Crit damage. Just the flat extra. I think it's 20% the crit damage. What do you think about it? I think it's B. A tier. Really? Okay. Uh, I Okay. I say B for pretty much the same logic as uh, the 40, the 40 points of accuracy or 40 points of resist. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it's at, a, at about that level of adding stuff. I can see the logic to A though, because you do want supplemental damage on your nuker. And yes. like, let's say you've got a defense-based nuker, it's probably a better subset <coughs> than Cruel. Mm -hmm. Because Cruel is good if you need the attack as well. But if you don't, 20% crit damage is probably better than like the 5% yeah. ignore defense. But it's a tough call. It kind of it, it kind of depends. So yeah, A. Gut instinct A. Let's talk about reflex uh the cool uh, skill cooldown or what do you call it the 30 percent chance to uh do a cooldown reduction 40. is it 40 i think so let me, let me, let me you get that. it from the ice golem i have it right here yeah 40 percent chance reflex you get from ice golem 40 percent chance to reduce a random skill cooldown by one turn i think it's a great set i don't think it's like a, a crazy set but being able to reset your moves so you can do whatever move you want um that much sooner pretty nice i, I think so you could yeah, like, do I, uh, I um i don't use it often no. i think i've got um it, it's particularly good on anybody that's only got an a2 yeah and, and they don't have 
any other moves because then mm -hmm. then you know you're just going to get that move back that much quicker what i but do is i uh, preset and i just turn off the other other skills off if i want a specific thing to pop off yeah that's another good way to do it yeah like with yeah. a cold heart if you're exactly. just like you know what cold heart is not going to use her aoe yeah like come on guys she's she's going for the heart seeker i'm gonna go a what do you think though i would have gone b but okay. I mean, like I'm looking at the other things that are in A, it probably deserves to be up there with the rest of those. Okay. It, it was definitely an A before they, they nerfed the, um, the infinity oh, shield. Oh my God. For yes. Hydra. Yep. I actually built my Brogni in, um, reflex. In reflex. I had mine in Savage. And I, and I never really got to, to, to enjoy it. But, but yeah. anyway, that's, those days are over. Yeah. Not using that anymore. All the past. What a, that's uh, also is... part of i i think i i gotta be like i said this before that I, that i kind of lost uh lost interest in in building hydra teams i just i really yeah. hate hydra. I hate <laughs> thinking about hydra i don't want to think anymore i don't want to i don't want to have to change my teams around each week yeah trying to figure out how to get the damage i hate all the rng and part of it is i built this team and then Plarium just came in and nerfed something, and I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't over do this. it. And it robbed me of my will to do it. This game has stolen so many years of my life, man. I'm right there with you. This particular <laughs> set you get from the Magma Dragon, Fatal, you get a boost to attack oh, and that, crit rate. That I sounds think. right. Yeah, Fatal, 15% attack and then extra 5% crit rate. I don't really use this for anything, but I have seen this put on some nukers out there i don't think it's a crazy set i would give it a b what are your thoughts what's your experience with it um i have exactly four pieces in my whole in whole inventory and i don't use them i don't even know why i'm holding on to them they don't even have particularly good stats on them so i i i'd, I'd say c i could give it a Maybe. c i'm okay with I that mean, being a c attack 15 percent and crit rate plus five percent yeah, it's, that's like ever so slightly than the other ones that we put in F, right? Yeah. Probably one of the most inferior sets to come out of the Doom Tower. Destroy. A niche set for me. Up against the Scarab. Yeah, Scarab King. That's that's what this that's is That's about for. it. I'd say B, because you, you want it for the Scarab King. That's about it. The only champion on my entire account in um, Destroy Gear mm -hmm. is Armager. I can see I, that. I made him, a, I made him a, a Scarab King specialist. Bloodthirst. 12% crit rate and then heals by 30% of damage dealt. Life steal with crit rate on it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't really use it, but like, what do you what do you think about it? I don't even think I have this set, so yeah. I think this is Eternal Dragon. It's like a plus one life steal, but I'd probably still say it's B. Yeah, I'd say B also. Affinity Breaker. What are your thoughts? I do not use Affinity Breaker. In theory, if you know you're going to be farming a specific level of boss, mm -hmm. Affinity Breaker could be great. The crit damage plus 30%, I think, is a new buff to it. I think before it was just there was a chance to change a weak hit into a critical, and now you've got that crit damage plus 30%. So now it's actually good. Now, like if, if, if you built, say, Allure in it, and she specialized in Fire Knight 20, for example, you got like the, the Affinity matchup is not good so you want that to help you out the crit damage plus 30 percent is intriguing because that does give you a big amount of damage i'd still say it's probably a b i don't really use it for anything if i do see someone who is a, of a different affinity i just pick somebody else that's the list right here we're always willing to change our mind feel free to change your mind in the comments below gavin thank you so much for giving me your time today go ahead and check out gavin on his channel i'll link it down below Take thank it easy. you